In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new AI powered features inside of Photoshop that are designed to allow us to remove backgrounds from images. Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. Now, one thing I want to tell you is that these images, they're full size. They're not uh, scaled down for the purposes of the tutorial. So you're going to be seeing this thing performing in real time and you're going to be seeing the real performance. Now, before we go on, if you have watched some of my previous videos, I've featured some of these in previous vi videos. They have been improved for Photoshop 22. If you're completely new to Photoshop, understand Photoshop is just $10 a month. However, this month in uh, November, this week only, uh, Black Friday week, you can get it uh, as part of the Creative Cloud for about 40% off. And I'm going to have a link in that in the description to that. If you're a student, you can get the entire Creative Cloud, usually for about 60% off uh, around Black Friday. I'll have a link to that in the description if that is available uh, for this year. Now, let's take a look at the features that have been improved. Probably the one that has been improved the most is the object selection tool. This tool has been around for quite some time but they've added an object finder. With this particular function, you can actually see the selection like that. It, it allows you to see what the selection, what the AI has found inside of the image. And uh, we can choose the camera here. We can choose the model. We can choose hard edge or soft edge. And this is a really powerful feature. Now at the moment, it's looking like, hey, it's not gonna select the, the, the camera. I'm just gonna select the model However, it actually ends up selecting the entire uh, combination, both model and camera have been selected. For this second image, we have a model. The hair is a bit of an issue. It's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more curly. And we also have this thing going on where the foreground and the background, the model, there's not a huge amount of luminance. There's not a huge amount of contrast. Uh, between foreground and background. Here, probably I would want to go and choose select subject. That will do a fantastic job on the hair. And then once we've got the selection, this is how quick it is. We can go to select and mask. That's how it looks on my system. You might want to hit K on the keyboard. V, A, those bring up different backgrounds which might work better for you. Uh, there are a number of features. This one is very useful for working with hair. You can go ahead and just say, look, I want you to take a look at that hair and just tell me if that's actually foreground or background. Once you're happy, you can go ahead and choose decontaminate colors and that will basically restore quite a lot of the color from the hair. Or you can go ahead and you can choose new layer with layer mask. Uh, I'm going to choose both and we'll go ahead and see the result. That's the result. And that's a pretty decent looking result, I think. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third image. This one, it's almost like it's magic. This one is a fairly complicated image. There's a lot of background blur and there's a lot of foreground blur as well, but it's going to do just fine. Take a look at this. We're going to use the select subject. And select subject is going to struggle a little bit. You can see it's got some of the background there. Let's go and use the select or the object selection tool. It, it does its magic in the background, so it's already found the object. Let's choose select, deselect, and we can see what this tool is doing for us. It's finding the, the cup there, it's finding the model. Notice that it's not indicating that it's going to select this area here, but when we click, it has selected that area there. So if we just zoom in, maybe just do that. You can see it has selected that area of the model there that was not indicating as uh, potentially part of the selection. We can see here, if we just really zoom in, there's a part there that I'm not entirely sure. I think that's background. So I can say to it, look, I want you to go ahead and maybe subtract. So we have the rectangle option. I'm just going to say, take another look at this area here. Just try to find out if that's actually foreground and back. Look at that. It's gone ahead and has figured out that this is actually part of the background, not a part of the model. I think that's a better selection. So let's zoom out. That looks fantastic. And you can see just how powerful this thing is. Uh, one word of caution, this particular tool, 
that if the object finder is turned on, it's going to be, especially if you have a large number of images open, it's going to be doing its magic. It may kind of like weigh down the system a little bit. Uh, so you might sometimes want to turn this off uh, if you're not actively using it on an image. So guys, that is it for this video. I hope you found that useful. Some of this stuff is really uh, significantly improved. Um, I'm going to leave those useful links in the description and that is going to be it for this one. If you like that one, hit the like button, uh, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next video.